Hello and welcome to Nomi Factory. As you can see over here, I have built, been building a little, and that's because I want to focus on building and cleaning up the mess that we call our base here in this episode. I think I've settled on the design here, which is some pillars and some slopes here, roof tiles made with architecture, architecture craft. Um, this is the blast furnace room where I also have my vacuum freezer and I was thinking this would extend one more quadrant here for more blast furnaces and this uh, crossway here might go so that we can add even more blast furnaces per room so that it, this will only be a passageway. Um, I'll probably connect all of the rooms uh, more than I have done here so that this wall here isn't necessarily uh, going to be here. Same with this. It will extend along the lines of here. Um, and then sometimes we will have an opening. So I moved my setup over here, like my uh, crafting terminal and the other terminals over here, where I want my base to have its middle. It will become kind of big if this is the middle, but that's not... Uh, I don't think that will be a problem. Because uh, if we see this, all this will go at some point. Because uh, we won't use that. That's the old base. We're building the new base. I moved the processes over here and made a couple uh, of another 16Ks and combined them with the 16K I already have had and uh, made a whole nother processor here which can handle 32,000 bytes. I kept the 4K ones because those are good for the smaller crafts. These we will need for the chunkier crafts, these double 16Ks. At some point I want them to be 3x3x3, three by three by three, but uh, we don't really have the resources for that yet. But I think this is also a good time to take a step back and uh, plan what we want to do with this space and uh, which order we want to progress in. The uh, main focus on this episode is base planning slash building. That's what we want to do today. The next thing we want to do is probably polytetrafluoroethylene. And for that we need a lot of fluorine. Which is a chemical you get from uh, some different items. But you can't, you can make it uh, passive with a, let's see here. If we electrolyze this biotite dust, if we electrolyze that, we get two buckets of fluorine per 22 of these and a lot of oxygen, which we get otherwise. This uh, biotite dust here, we get from electrolyzing black granite dust and black granite dust we can get from polarizing black granite. It's kind of a long process. And the black granite we can get from an EV rock breaker. So we'll need to make our first EV machine and our first EV energy converter. But it should be possible. I have EV circuits on auto crafting. Uh, I have the expensive one, the workstation. This one, very expensive, but uh, we have it on auto crafting. We probably want some travel anchors as well to get around the base. At the moment I run a lot and that's no fun. But if you could get a travel anchor here and over on the other side of the base that would just be perfect. I also want to passive energetic alloy and vibrant alloy. We need these for Ender IO stuff and also for some circuits. 
And we also need it for the numismatic dynamos, which we will have to upgrade at some point again. Uh, I'm actually not sure how much power they are consuming right now. You have to remember that uh, every process is not running at once, so it doesn't necessarily consume a lot, but it, it might do. Let's see here. Yeah, we are only consuming half our power, so that's fine. We have 21,000 aluminum. We could turn that blast furnace off, but uh, who knows? We may need a lot of aluminum at one point. I feel like this room here will would be a good on-demand crafting area. Like we have... Um, the uh, interfaces on all the machines over there, the single machines, we could have those here at high voltage. So if we need some odd bolt that we don't need in masses, we can make it here in a extruder. Or if we need a plate that we don't produce many of, we can put it here in a bending machine. Um, I'm not sure it will fit in here, but we can put some of it in here at least, and then we can expand if we need to. So moving machines, moving slash replacing machines. It's funny, in Nomi Factory you always feel like you have to do three things at once, but... Uh, I promised that this one would be a base building, so we will focus on this. We may also focus on moving the machines from there to over here. That's a part of the base building, I guess. But uh, processing, well, sorry, progressing is not a part of the plan today. Only if we get tired of base building. Okay, so... Uh, I actually recorded me moving a lot of these machines here, but uh, the files got corrupted and some of them, I also just ex over explained a lot of stuff, which uh, is an issue that I have. I uh, set up a network of trail anchors, or I set up three of them. These you can craft with dark steel and vibrant alloy and a pulsating crystal. I also made these pulsating crystals, but I will explain how I did that. So uh, I basically did this because I was tired of moving machines back and forth, forth by foot. Um, and you can travel between these in two ways. You can stand on top of it, look at which one you want to go to, and then press shift and it will teleport you. But you can also acquire this staff of traveling. Mine I got from the Lost Dimension. Uh, Lost Cities Dimension. But you can also craft it pretty easily when you are at this, this tier of technology. And uh, with this you can just right click on the uh, traveling angle you want to go to from anywhere inside your base. Like this. So if I'm all the way down there, I can just right click and I'm here at the old base. I also moved all the molecular assemblers here and I'm doing an archway, archway here of uh, the molecular assemblers and interfaces. I, I'm only able to do this because uh, channels are disabled in Nomi Factory. Else I would have had a problem with this, but uh, I thought it was kind of funny doing it this way. I didn't know how to design it. Otherwise, it was just keeping this blast furnace here running. Uh, at the moment, we are doing stainless steel because we were running kind of low on that. Don't know how much we have now. We have 700 and we have uh, about 400 dust, but we can craft up some more here. Yeah, and we will just let that keep running for a while so that we will have more. 
we used a lot of it on the stainless steel uh, blocks for the distillation tower and we are also using a lot on crafting up all these high voltage machines the pulsating crystals we are using for the travel anchors i have automated here it's just a an extractor and an autoclave you uh, use the autoclave here to craft the pulsating crystal with a diamond and some liquid pulsating iron instead of uh, making a recipe with a liquid in which i'm not sure is possible in this pack here i uh, say that we take a hardened or just a normal pulsating iron ingot and a diamond and say that it makes a pulsating crystal out of that and then i just filter uh, the ingot to go into the extractor and the diamond to go into the autoclave and then the extractor makes it into a liquid and auto injects it into this autoclave here and then we get the crystal and it's extracted back into the system it's a simple setup and uh, I can show you how I done it because I haven't automated the vibrant crystal yet so I can do that right now. We just uh, take the recipe for this, say it says it's an emerald becomes a vibrant crystal and then we need to add the vibrant alloy here. Just running it like so. Then we put it into the interface here. This needs to be in blocking mode. Put the pattern in there. Let's see if it works. Why when crystal? We have wipe and ally in the system. That's a prerequisite. I'm one of my goals is to get this uh, on passive soon because we're using a lot of it for numismatic dynamos and just for cables in general. So let's also craft one of these. Let's see here. It got pulled into the system, but they they aren't filtered here. So the vibrant alloy we filter in this filter here in the extractor. And the emerald we filter in the autoclave. Like so. Let me put the items back in. This extracts the vibrant alloy, puts it in here, autoclaves it into a vibrant crystal, and it gets extracted. And the craft should have finished here. It did. And we have our vibrant crystal. If you were wondering how I create these platforms so quickly, I do it with this copy paste gadget here, which is just some emeralds and uh, redstone, lapis and iron. And I take this and hold G to get into this menu here. It's uh, bound to G by default. Uh, and I choose copy. And then I shift, right click, one of the corners of this platform here and then just right click the other corner and it should have copied then i hold the g button again and press paste and you can see here it shows an area uh, which i uh, am pasting if it it doesn't uh, go to the if it isn't turned the way you want it to you can go into the menu and rotate it and you can also undo but you can only undo one action so you need to be careful with that i want the platform here and see i want a platform here actually and that's just that's how quickly you can make them another thing that's nice with this if you shift and hold over it you can see which materials you need 
for uh, to be able to craft the thing you copied and in the crafting table or AA system here it will show if you have uh, the items you need like if I put all these things into the AA system it will show a red number which is what you need so I'll just bring these back out again and the elevator blocks I crafted this uh, flux ball here and upgraded it a couple of times to reinforced. The way you make this is you get the dwell core either from, yeah, as it says, exploration of the lost cities, um, or you can craft it. But I got mine from the lost cities dimension, and then you can craft it directly into a tool casing. This tool casing. You can use together with a drill head and some other components to make the basic flux ball. You need stainless steel as well for this. So it's gated by high voltage. And yeah, then I just upgraded it a couple of times. This can mine 3x3, three three, but I just use it on single block mode. I got tired of crafting up diamond pickaxes. And you can adjust the area by pressing V on the keyboard. I made another one of these arrays here, over here, and plugged in a lot of uh, assembling machines, um, which we will use for the different circuits. Like if we need a circuit of one in the recipe, it will go in this assembling machine. And if it needs other circuits, it will go in one of the others here. We also want one for polyethylene. And we probably want some for other fluids as well. I kind of didn't think about uh, that how these would get fluid because they have an interface on the bottom uh, and power on the back here. So the only uh, face that isn't used is uh, the upper face here of the machine. Uh, so we'll probably have to do hundreds on these blocks, which means the facades needs to be on these blocks, which means we can't use these uh, laboratory uh, sl slopes here. Um, so we will have to just make it flat. And uh, the same I will probably do over here so that it doesn't look weird. I will uh, stick the fluid interface in the middle here. And this should be enough for the fluids we need in these assemblers here. I drag an ME connection up here and into the uh, interface. And these we can use facades for 100 facades. I'm actually crafting, crafting them up right now. Um, you need these 100 facades, then you need the block you want it to look like. And you put that into a painting machine, which I placed under here. This is from Ender IO. You just place a block, and then you put a facade in, and then it makes a facade out of that. I'll just make, let's say, this many. And uh, you can just place those on top of the conduits. Same goes with the ME cable. Uh, those also have facades that you can use. These you craft up with cable anchors and the block that you want it to look like. You can just place those over there and you won't see any cables. This assembling machine here is my polyethylene assembler and also my circuit one assembler. I have combined these two. I don't think there are any conflicts, but if there is, <laughs> I'll probably find out. This is our most important assembling machine because this makes us SMD uh, components which we use for all our circuits. So if this didn't work, uh, none of our circuits would be crafted and we couldn't get any more I machines. So pretty important. In one of the coming episodes I want to passive 
these so that we will always have let's say 500 or a thousand of them on hand so we don't have to craft them up all the time when we need circuits so i've been working on a little secret project between episodes i have been crafting up a lot of glass creed i'm not sure if it's enough but i have quite a bit and i made enough filter casings for a 9x9 nine nine clean room so uh, we will see if it's enough and if it isn't we will craft up some more so i crafted up the floor here this is how big the clean room will be it's a uh, nine by nine, nine by nine indoors and uh, well, that makes it an 11 by 11 floor here i'm pretty sure you need to have the edges crafted as well for it to count but uh, this will be fine, I think. So the clean room is almost finished here. All I need is a door and some power for it. And then we need to tear down the old clean room and use those filter casings here and the control block. And then this should be working. I tore apart the old clean room. So now we have the last filter casings here. And we have the controller. If I can find it, right here. It says the structure is incomplete. We probably need something else here. A maintenance hatch, I would guess. I'd craft it up first. Okay, so I had some problems getting this uh, clean room to form, but I found the culprit here. <laughs> I accidentally placed a laboratory block instead of a plascrete block, and now it forms. I don't want the uh, holes and stuff here, but uh, I thought that might have been the problem, but uh, it was the laboratory block that caused it. The next couple of clips didn't have any audio, uh, or at least not uh, commentary, but I'll try to explain what I did here. The first thing I did was to craft up a EV rock breaker and place it down on an EV line. We can still use the in-steel conduit or in-steel uh, wires here because they go all the way up to EV. Then uh, we macerated here into black granite dust it's black granite we do here and that can only be done at EV we then extract into some drawers here it gives thorium as well so we have two outputs what I do is I craft up a drawer controller well, I already did craft it up, but I place it down on top of the macerator and extract into that. Um, lock the drawers, of course, and then give the thorium and black granite dust a drawer each.
I placed the black granite dust uh, on the bottom so that I could easily extract it with a robot arm here. We do the same stunt for the centrifuge. We just put a controller slave on top of it and then extract the two uh, outputs into that. We get silicon dioxide and we get uh, biotite dust. And the biotite we'll use, so we place that on the bottom. We place down an electrolyzer and put a robot arm on it to extract the biotite dust. And we also extract that into a draw slave. So uh, the outputs that we get will get put into the draw system. I moved around the drawers a little so that it would be a little bit cleaner. I uh, made some draw trim into uh, conduit facades so that we could hide the conduits here. This just extracts the fluorine into a super tank and the oxygen into another super tank. And uh, the items that we get from the electrolyzer here, I also uh, injected into a draw slave so that this is a whole system. And we get some stuff here that we don't necessarily need. This is all done because we need the fluorine for hydrofluoric acid, which is used for polytetrafluoroethylene and we will use that a lot in the future for stuff like large chemical reactors well i think that's what i had for you this episode we got a lot of things done we moved over a lot of the machines or we actually didn't move them over but we replaced them with high voltage machines then we moved over the molecular assemblers and started this arcway here which is kind of silly, but also uh, looks kind of cool. We uh, built the clean room and made it much larger so that we can fit more machines in here. It was a little bit crowded only with three machines in the old one, but now we have uh, a quite a bit larger one. We uh, decided on the design of our base here we didn't get a lot of uh, it built but we want to build it with this style so uh, that's fun we set up some travel anchors which i'm totally in love with i can move around the base so much faster and uh, it doesn't require f flight to get around we could get the glitch armor to get uh, creative flight but i think I feel like that's kind of cheating when I've decided to play on peaceful, so I won't be doing that. We won't be getting creative flight until the angel wing here. And that is very expensive. Let's see. Extended crafting. Wait. This is not as expensive as I thought it was. They might have made this cheaper, I don't know. I feel like this was more expensive last time I played. Yeah, we might be going for this soon because it looks like it's not that bad to craft up. So, uh, the last thing we did was craft up uh, a system that would be able to make us fluorine. I've been AFKing a lot, so we have quite a bit of fluorine uh, stuck up here and a lot of oxygen that we can use if we choose to. I made this uh, priority minus a thousand so it uses this first, otherwise we will just um, void it. So might as well use it before it gets to the point where it's voided. And uh, I think that's what I did this episode. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank everybody who likes the videos and subscribes. And uh, also just the ones who choose to watch my videos. It's really nice to have an audience. Even though I only do this because uh, it motivates me to play. And 
and uh, also as a hobby. So uh, I really appreciate it. And I hope you'll tune into the next episode. Bye bye.